We're the Indie Project, B and Theo. In 2017, we bought an abandoned property in central Portugal and spent the last few years turning it into a fully fledged homestead, converting an old stone barn into a cozy tiny home. Working non-stop and overcoming many obstacles, it turned out better than we ever could have imagined. As one chapter closes, another one begins. Our dreams of living even more remotely in a fairy tale forest with space for animals to roam and our passions to grow became a reality. Before we have even moved there, it was devastated by a huge wildfire, drastically altering the landscape. Immense flash floods followed as the land couldn't hold onto the water. Follow us as we carve out our new life on Miracle Mountain. Good morning guys, welcome back to a brand new video. It seems really peaceful here this morning. I mean, it's always really peaceful but there's like a different sense of peace. It just feels very calming. The birds are tweeting. The sun is actually shining at the moment, but I'm not sure what the actual weather forecast is. I think it's gonna be up and down throughout the day, but I've got a lot to be getting on with, rain or shine. I feel way too big for this vehicle anyway. We've let the goats out, the chickens are out, the cats are out. B is currently doing a Portuguese lesson and I'm heading to the Project Village House to pick up the vacuum cleaner. I have just arrived to the Project Village House and there's been a lot of progress going on here and it's looking so nice. You can see behind me that the ceiling has had a first coat of white paint and it looks really good. It's opened up the space, it feels much brighter area and bigger in here before the ceiling was a dark brown varnish wood and it just didn't sit right in this room because the ceilings are a little bit lower they're slanted and we wanted to make this space feel much bigger than it actually is and there's a lot of daylight coming into here as you can see from the video i'm standing right in front of two big windows this is going to be a lovely lounge when it's finished all the other rooms have really nice high ceilings so we're going to keep the wooden ceilings throughout the property because we don't want to strip the character out of this place we want to keep the character but modernize it and make it feel lighter and brighter but this is what i came here for the shop vacuum cleaner this is going to really help clean up the garage floor i've just arrived on miracle mountain and I can tell you the boot in a Fiat 500 is not very big at all, but I managed to get in some blocks of wood so I can take all the remaining wood out of the garage, ready to do the floor, hopefully today. And it got taken up the whole boot just by a vacuum cleaner. It's absolutely hilarious. I'm very thankful for this hire car, but I'm also looking forward to having our duster back because it's way higher off the ground there's way more space and it's way more practical for us so this is the first challenge this is our chipper that we've not used yet and it's really big and <laughs> it's really heavy i needed two people to move it on a pallet but I can separate it into parts, now it's off the pallet, so I should be able to get this, hopefully, on the back of the UTV and I'm going to store it up by the house for now while it needs to be outside, but it's an absolute beast, which is what we need, you know, it's got a lot of uh, work to do on this property. Might have to do two trips because this on its own. It's really heavy. <laughs> this can take a real decent size of branch. And I'm looking forward to getting some wood chippings for your garden. Yes, yeah, Cut this off. At least this is on wheels. That's true. Instructions. 
Now here we go. I think it's 175 kilos. So that's divided by two. Still. What's that like? Two people? Yeah, that'll be like what? And this is me trying to do some quick maths. Oh, that's a that's a heavy. <laughs> that is heavy. Unless it's still. We're probably doing like 80, well, this isn't the best maths, but it's going to be at least 85 kilos each and I'm not feeling ultra strong, but I'll try. Change the plan. I'm just going to store it outside, cover it in Tyvek so it doesn't get soaked by the rain. But we've got three lovely days of dry weather, so hopefully, I can get the painting done in that time and get it back in the garage. It will be fine. I've just finished cleaning the floor and thanks to our friends at Soundcore who have sponsored today's video. They've sent us the Soundcore Motion Boom Plus and we've been loving using it while we're working all over the property. This is the perfect speaker for our lifestyle. It's lightweight design, detachable handle and strap make it perfect for our outdoor projects like building the new workshop, olive harvesting and gardening. And it has up to 20 hours of playtime so we can listen to it all day. It has extremely vivid outdoor sound that is super clean even at high volume. And it's totally upgraded in terms of the woofer outputs, new tweeter and sound quality. The sound performance of the Motion Boom Plus in relation to its price make this a great deal and it's perfect addition for any outdoor activity. Whether you're camping, hosting an outdoor party, van lifing or doing outdoor projects just like us. They've currently got 40% off so click the link in our description box to get yours today. So I'm losing light so I need to crack on. So what I'm doing is I'm just opening the tin of sealer which is really just a liquid like it's not like a, a paint consistency it's almost like a water consistency i'm still going to give it a little stir up with the drill and then i'm going to put it in this plastic container so i can move it around and then just get sealing i don't think it will take me that long and i'm i'm raring to go now it's clean because this is the cleanest the floor will ever get
nearly at the end and this stuff is really smelly. I'm glad I wore the mask. I'm right at the end. I just said that maybe the mask isn't working <laughs> and you're probably wondering why I'm in socks. That is because I managed to get my shoes soaking wet and my sandals soaking wet with mud all over them and I didn't want that going all over the resin and all over the floor because that would not be the desired finish. But as I said, I'm nearly there. I think I might be slightly high off the fumes, <laughs> just slightly. Put your mask back on. Well, it's not working if you're high, so just take it off. Yeah, I mean, he's doing something, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not on the floor. So that's it. The first coat is done and the garage project is off to a flying start. Back tomorrow to do one more coat of the sealer on the floor and then I can paint it the next day hopefully if it's all dried but it seems to be drying out really quickly at the moment which is good it is getting quite cold tonight so drying times might take longer than normal but I'm so happy that's done and I'll see you tomorrow good morning guys it's a new day here at Miracle Mountain I've just arrived and it's a really crisp morning beautiful weather and I'm just walking over the bridge onto the island. There's a little bit of water in the lake from the rainfall that we've had and it looks to me like in the distance on the far side of the lake there's actually some frost so I'm going to go down and investigate and see what I can find. The key here is to try not to fall down this huge hill into the lake. So I'm in the lake and there's definitely some frost down here. I don't know if you can see that. Just here, this is some frost. And now I'm going to check the water because it does look like there's some ice in there. Whoa, I nearly fell over. So you can see some more frost on the ground here, just around where the water is. And I'm gonna go right up to the edge and you should be able to see it. See if I can pick some out. There we go, it's not very thick, but that's the first frost of the season. So we now know once this is all filled up, we can go for ice swims and we've had a lot of questions from people asking, do we get snow here? We don't get any snow, but obviously we do get ice because we are up on the side of a mountain. We're quite high up and it's not a bad thing, it's just we have to adjust a little bit. There was a little bit of frost in certain areas, but way less than here on or off grid property that we came from this morning. So it's interesting to see the different climates in the different places. And I've just noticed on the island, this light that was burnt in the fire, it's a really nice light. It's made out of like fiberglass, the pole is. And surprisingly, the bulb in there still lights up when we turn on the switch. But this was standing just yesterday, so it's obviously just given way. You can see here the fiberglass and the wiring. So yeah, we need to get the electrician in to sort that out. Back at the garage for round two of the sealer. So the sealer looks like it's dried out really nicely. You can probably see behind me there are some oils and stuff that were on the floor that I couldn't get off. So hopefully the gray paint that I'm gonna paint onto this as the final surface, I'm hoping that will cover it all and we'll start fresh with a nice clean floor. It'll make it so much easier to clean this area as well because cleaning a concrete floor that's not sealed, it just constantly dusts and it's not a good working environment. So this will be much cleaner and easier to work with. So I have just finished the second coat of sealer on the concrete floor 
And all of this rubbish, you guys are probably wondering, are you gonna leave it there forever? No, I'm waiting for the car to be fixed so I can use the trailer and take all of this stuff to the dump. Well, not all of it because stuff like these paint tubs that are used, they're really useful for storing other paints and liquids in. We have the sand filter for the pool. There are some useful things in here that we will be keeping, but a lot of it will actually just go to the dump. And inside the garage, you can see the floor is still dry enough from all the patches, but I just think it's gonna look amazing when I get the gray paint down, hopefully tomorrow, this is gonna be transformed yet again. This will be one nice solid color, and then we have the white walls, and then I can start working on all of the shelving, the workbench that's gonna go in the corner and wrap around here. I'm gonna be able to store chainsaws, strimmers, all sorts of stuff on the wall. And then I'm gonna build a big work table that's on wheels that I can move around and even take outside. So I'm just taking a nice leisurely stroll back up to the house because the bee is currently doing a Portuguese lesson. And as you can tell, it's quite steep up this road. I'm going to be heading further up the mountain after she's finished the lesson. And a lot of you guys have asked why the garage is so far away from the house. And it's a really good design actually because the garage and the workshop is in an area where all the agriculture is, where all the fields, where all the, the fruit trees, where all the work gets done in the house is further up the mountain on the side by the forest in a really nice position out the way. So it's really nice because you don't confuse the two. And I still have to pinch myself that this is actually our property because just look at this. I can go up the road there. I can go up the road there. I can go back down the windy road down there. This literally feels like I'm living in a park that when I lived in the city, I would literally walk or drive to an area not as beautiful as this to go walking and now we well we don't live here but we're soon to live here which is exciting and look at this when this is all filled up with water i can't wait to dive in i don't care how cold it is if there's ice i'm jumping in there so right now i'm just taking a walk up the mountain because there's clear evidence of loads of different animals living up there and I want to find out exactly what's going up there in the night, in the daytime, when we're not about, it'll be really cool to see what's there. So I've got two trail cams and I'm going to go set them up right now. So off we go into the forest, following the trail. I absolutely love this trail. There's many trails on our property, but this one is one of my favorites. It really is stunning, especially when the light is low and you got just a sense of peace and calmness. So there's clear wild boar activity in this area. So I'm gonna pop one of these trail cameras down somewhere around here, probably by that stone because there's a little area where you can see them. They've been putting their noses down and finding whatever they find. So yeah, one of the cameras over here, I reckon. I do have straps for the cameras, but I need to find them. So once I find the straps, I'll move them around. But the plan is to rotate these cameras constantly just to see what's on this massive property. Cause I guarantee you there's some crazy things on here, even wolves. So if we spot a wolf, that would be absolutely amazing. And we've, we spotted all sorts of things right down the bottom of our property. And that's more in the open here. There's bound to be all sorts of things. Just trying to find where to put the next camera. I'm thinking by a water source, see if we can catch some things drinking. So this looks like the perfect location. The stream runs all the way from the top of the mountain and down this valley. I'm just going to put the camera right down there and I'll update you guys and see what we actually find. Oh, 
Well, that is a wrap. I'm calling the video there. It's been very productive. I'm so excited to get the paint down. It's going to look amazing and then I can move on to the next step. Thank you once again for watching and we'll see you on the next one.